Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants event. My name is Joe Grabowski, and I will be your host for today. We couldn't be more excited to be hosting events during Secret Path Week in partnership with the Gore Downey and Shani Wenjack Fund. So the Downey Wenjack Fund is part of uh, musician Gore Downey's legacy and embodies his commitment uh, and that of both the Downey and Wenjack families to call Canadians to action in solidarity with Indigenous peoples of this land. So the goal is to continue the conversation that began with Chani Wenjack's residential school story and to support the reconciliation process through awareness, education, and action. So over the next four school days, classrooms uh, from across Canada and beyond will join in and help us celebrate Indigenous scientists, artists, and leaders from across the country and work towards meaningful reconciliation. So we're really excited today to be joined by Chantelle Pronto. Uh, she works, lives, and plays uh, in the community of Klemtu. I, uh, she currently works as a coastal guardian watchman in Muscle Inlet and also as the languages coordinator for Clemtu's uh, languages revitalization project. So a goal of hers is to educate herself in the health, wellness and healing to better understand what it looks like in a First Nations community. And recently she computed or completed a one year online uh, certification program called Aboriginal Health and Community Administration Programs at the University of British Columbia. So Chantal, it's so awesome to have you joining us live today. We've got classrooms joining us on camera. We have more classrooms joining us live on YouTube and we're really excited to get to know you a little better. Wonderful, well, thanks for having me, Joe. I'm very happy to be a part of this uh, week and this event and um, very thankful for Lauren as well for uh, acknowledging me and um, yeah. So maybe I'll take a quick moment to just talk a bit about like, where I am, or do you want me to hold off on that until we get to the PowerPoint? No, that sounds perfect. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about where you are, and then when you're ready, you can jump into the, the screen share. Okay. Uh, well, it'll come up in a, in a few slides, but good morning, everyone, or it's my morning here where we are on the West Coast. I believe some of you are on the East Coast, so it is nine o'clock in the morning here. Uh, so a little bit about me. Uh, I was actually born in the, the city of Vancouver uh, here in BC. And I grew up there until I was 14 years old. And now I've been living in Klemtu for the last 11 years, working in many different capacities uh, in the stewardship department in my community. I uh, am the only daughter. I have four other brothers. Uh, uh, so I have uh, four, two older brothers and two younger brothers. Um, my background uh, or my ancestry is mixed. So I am Simshian, which is a common nation here on the West Coast. And then I'm also part Métis, which is a type of Cree First Nation. And some of my hobbies include baking and cooking. So I'm a really big fan of trying out new recipes and doing some baked goods. So that's a little bit about me. Perfect. And well, we're excited to learn a little bit more about uh, what it means to be a guardian watchman and uh, the other activities you're doing. Awesome. I will sort of start with my presentation. So it was nice to see some of you guys and I hope you like it. And um, I have a few photos or a number of photos as well as a video to share throughout. So I'm gonna do that here. Bear with me for a quick moment. Okay, so can you guys see this? Yeah, it looks good, nice and full screen. Okay, so really quickly, uh, this is a photo here that was taken in the late, eight, uh, late 1800s of our community here in Klemtu. So in the photo, you might be able to just get a little sight of uh, a few folks coming in on a canoe. And I thought this is a really neat photo to share. Um, I really admire this photo. It's found in the uh, BC Archive Museum. And I also just wanted to take a moment to share where exactly I am situated here uh, on the coast of um, BC. So, oh, so Joe, can you guys see, you guys can see my arrow, correct? Uh, yep, yep, definitely. Okay. So yeah, here in the middle here, this is a map of the coastal First Nations on the British Columbia West Coast. So Clem 2 is right smack in the middle here. And that's where I am. I'll talk a bit more about these uh, nations a little later on. Uh, these nations are 
many of our allies that we do a lot of work close work with as well and similar work. Here's a bit of more of a closer uh, photo of exactly um, the map of our homelands or territory. And I just thought this was really neat to sort of share the, the, the vast um, landscape. So here in our, in our territory, we have not only um, a series of islands on the west, but we also have some of the mainland and fjord land inlets. So many places like this have high mountain ranges as well as many valleys and rivers. But so do the West West Islands as well. So this is where I live and play. This this whole area, you can imagine us riding around on the boats. In general, it'll take about an hour and a half to two hours to get from the Clem to epicenter to places like in the fjords or places out in the West. So before I sort of get in uh, into um, the the work I do as a guardian, I just wanted to sort of touch base on the community itself of Clem to. So Klemtu is home to two nations, the Kidisu and the Cheches. And the Kidisu, I'll go back, have, have, um, have long lived on the outer west coast and sort of are known to us as the island people. And the Cheches have originated from areas in the mainlands and had uh, a lot of village sites in, in that, those areas. So you kind of put a, a line down the middle of our territory, that's sort of the boundary of the two nations. So here's a photo that I had uh, from, a, from one of our uh, community members, Andrew Madison, and it's a nice photo of our big house uh, in the wintertime. So Clemtu is home to about 350 individuals year round. It'll pick up to about 450 when the summer and uh, fall season roll around, uh, mainly because we have a local lodge that houses um, many guests and we need a lot of employees and workers to come work in our community. So the, it fluctuates throughout the year. And a little bit about the community itself. We have about the population of younger individuals is much larger than the um, older generation. So the school uh, has kindergarten to grade 12 and we only have one general store here in the community. So that's where we get our groceries. Um, as well as the store, we have a cafe. So that's very a nice treat to have every now and again, you will get a bit of um, cafe food. So that's that slide. Here's another snapshot of our community by someone named Troy Robinson. And I thought this was really neat to sort of um, capture not only the picturesque of our community, but sort of the um, general layout. You can see the water here in the middle part of our photo and uh, in the back is our uh, uh, one half of our community. Okay, so like I mentioned to you guys earlier, I was born in Vancouver and uh, lived there for most of my young life. And I've been, now been living in Clem 2 for the last 11 years. So I moved here in August 2008 and had uh, lived with my grandmother, who actually, unfortunately, just passed away last February. But I had the honor to live with her and uh, learn a lot from her. And as I go through sort of the spectrum here, I... I uh, wanted to touch on the SEAS program, which I have a photo, to sh to, uh, a video to share in a moment. Um, so the SEAS program stands for Supporting Emerging Aboriginal Stewards. And then as we go along, uh, I share a little, I'll share a little bit about my role and when I started my role as a Coastal Guardian Watch person. And uh, touch on a little bit of uh, a training program that I took that was two years long and uh, touched on various um, resource monitoring slash archeological slash boat training maintenance stuff. So this program was sort of a um, pieces of um, the work that we actually do as a guardian and it's very, very, very vast work. So I'll touch on that a little bit and uh, not too much on the work I'm doing with the language program. I'm gonna sort of keep it guardian watchman specific as well as specific. And how am I doing there, Joe? Is everything loud and clear? Yeah, coming through a great Chantel. Awesome. My speed is good. Okay. Yep. Um, so yeah, some highlights, everyone. Um, before I talk to uh, folks uh, like yourself or the, or the general public, I like to acknowledge the work of the Haida Nation uh, who uh, live on an island called Haida Gwaii, formerly uh, referred to as Queen Charlotte Islands. 
in 1990, roughly, there was an individual, uh, an elder actually, uh, currently, who had noticed a place on Haida Gwaii that was receiving a lot of visitors. So a lot of boaters were coming through and, and kind of not really knowing how to respect or how to navigate around maybe, say, an old village site or a culturally sensitive area with um, totem poles and carvings and such. So he took it upon himself to travel down via canoe uh, to this place that I believe is known as Sky Gwei. And he started asserting uh, who he was and sort of the place that these individuals were visiting and sort of wanted to just sort of be the welcoming committee uh, or uh, the educator uh, for the public and really wanted to just sort of highlight the Haida uh, peoples themselves. So Captain Gold, his name is, is this individual and that's what he goes by. And uh, he's, he, if you wanna know more about him, I'm happy to share a bit more information about him, but I definitely like to acknowledge him and the work that he did uh, in his own community uh, before the Guardian Watchman Network and um, initiated. So moving forward in 2006 and in 2007, around those dates, uh, um, a, the gathering of nations in Prince Rupert took place, which uh, if I'm not mistaken, 15 to 17 different nations. So you remember that map I showed you earlier, there was about seven or eight. So in between there's other communities. So their communities came together and said, we need to start um, having a presence out on our water and out in our territory and sort of, what does that look like? So then the Guardian Watchman Network uh, was born. So, some gen so those are a couple of highlights that I wanted to touch on. And here's the part where I'm gonna share a nice video of some of the work that um, I was a part of in my um, post-graduation year, 2012. So in 2013, I took part in uh, the SEAS program, which was an eight-week summer program. And it gets uh, young individuals like myself uh, who don't know too much about um, how to identify a cultural site, what sort of f features to look for, or how to... Um, just generally talk to someone someone outside of your community and outside of your family and friends circle, sort of engaging the public and so on. So I'll show this video now. It's about four minutes or five minutes long and I hope you like it. I'll just have to open it up on the website. Yeah, so Chantal, depending on how you shared your screen, if you just shared the PowerPoint, um, you might have to stop the screen share and then share the video. Okay. I did do that uh, the way you said that. So I'll do that really quick. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah, no, no worries. Okay, so I'll, I'll stop the share. Is it yeah. coming up now? If you, there should be up at the top of your screen, I think, yeah, there, there we go. So you're back. And now if you hit the share screen again and pick the video this time, um, Perfect. or your whole desktop, and then you wouldn't have to switch around anymore. Whatever's easier. Is that on? All right. We got it now. Yep. All right, gang, let's do this. Uh, Chantel, is the volume playing on your end? Yep. Interesting. It's not coming through for us. Okay. Um, Let yeah. me try to figure that out for you. Yeah, maybe just try and turn it nice and loud for us on your end. And, and your microphone should pick it up. I don't think you're using headphones. Okay, yeah. let's, let's do this again. Sorry, guys. That's okay. Sometimes technology doesn't cooperate. But usually the microphone should be able to pick up the sound. If not, um, let's figure that out. So let's try this again. 
Can you hear? Yeah, darn. Sorry, Chantel. It's just not picking up. Is there, could I share this link with the teachers and they could check it out uh, with their Please. classes afterwards? Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Let's roll with that. Um, and then they can check it out after the presentation because we definitely want them to see the program. It looks really cool. Awesome. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to stop the share and come back. Perfect. Okay, so we're back. Yep. So yeah, you guys will check that out a little later. It's very, very cool, very informative and has a few highlights of some of, um, I'm, I'll be, I'll be cameo, cameo, cameoing in there as well as our stewardship director. So now here's a photo that we have here on the left of my screen of the Coastal Guardian Watchman pole that we have outside our big house. So really quickly, uh, Traditionally, the role of a young man uh, or uh, a young individual in a community, uh, you know, over 100 years ago or more uh, would have to play a, a role of a watchman or uh, sort of a guardian. And this pool sort of signi signifies that uh, and reminds us of that work and that role of a young man. Uh, and originally it was sort of used, the individual was used to make, um, to, to sort of look for any potential raiders or war parties coming through. Uh, areas and they would sort of be the first uh, individual who would report back to the community. And uh, it also sort of uh, was involved with the coming of age uh, practice that was done for young men who needed to, who were going through that growth stage of, um, you know, sort of a young, young boy to now, you know, from a teenager to a, a man. So this, this is a really important poll to, to us and uh, I really wanted to share that with everyone. And Here we have uh, a series of photos that I will um, talk a little bit about. And the first photo that we have here is a photo of myself in an area that I work in called Muscle. And a large part of our job is to just have that presence out there. So being at the front lines, having sort of the gum boots on the ground approach that we uh, we are there, we have that presence, and we are we are um, indeed um, monitoring the area. Another part of our job is to uh, count vessels as well as wildlife. So uh, in the bottom right corner here, you'll see a photo of a tablet. And this tablet has an app on, uh, on the device called the Coast Tracker. So the Coast Tracker is what we use to collect our data in our day-to-day. -day. So in the morning, what I'll do is start our patrol. So how that sort of would look is, uh, sorry, there's just a rainfall happening and I got distracted okay so so yeah part of our day we'll start it off and uh, enter in our patrol so as a dedicated patrol um what sort of weather is it looking like out there that's really important for us to, to have in the long run to sort of look back on these specific dates if any any type of infraction or any type of um, incident happens we'll go back and this will be saved on an online database which we have to um, upload uh, when, we're, when we return back to the community with wi-fi uh, another part of our uh, job is to educate. So I mentioned earlier, we're kind of, uh, as I mentioned with Captain Gold, he's sort of the welcoming committee and that's sort of how I see us and uh, the work we do when we engage with the public as well as commercial fishermen uh, or any day-to-day -day, um, yachties and boaters who are traveling through our area. So this is a pamphlet and a brochure that we'll give out uh, if we see fit and folks who wanna know a bit more and sort of spread the awareness on the work we're doing on the coast and in our community. Uh, we'll, we'll find debris and we'll clean that up. So if we see anything out on the beaches or on the shores or sort of floating around in the ocean, we really make it a point to um, pick that stuff up and take it home uh, here to our community where uh, we will um, dispose of it um, properly and effectively. And down here in the corner, um, this is really important for us as well. And a large part of my role in the Muscle Inlet, uh, which Joe had mentioned uh, earlier in the, in the day, is uh, uh, in implementing a management plan that is put in place for the various users who wanna visit this area. And what this area uh, is used for is for wildlife viewing. 
Uh, so you'll see a series of grizzly bears or oh, black bears, uh, wolves, um, and all that, all in between uh, in, in these areas. So the point of this um, viewing, a designated viewing area or a management plan is to ensure that uh, the animals and the wildlife are, uh, are we're predictable to them. So we're not gonna be trampling around, uh, creating a series of trails in, the, in their home. We're gonna have one specific area and one specific trail that we use time and time again uh, and sort of make sure that um, they don't come habituated, become habituated with us. And that means um, too comfortable uh, and um, all those things that we, we wanna make sure that, that they're comfortable more or less. Um, sort of moving forward uh, with the coast tracker that we'd use to collect data, uh, we are able to visit uh, many, many, many parts of our territory. So earlier you might remember that I had a photo of this exact map. So here's a photo um, and you can see that where the red lines are, are the waterways. And this is a map from 2016. So that's on the left. If you look on the right, here's a, a patrol route of the government provincial agencies who um, are sort of our counterparts and some of our co colleagues in a way. And you'll see that they don't have as many lines on the map as we do. And partly because um, their range only goes to a certain area, but also because of funding. So many government agencies, unfortunately, uh, aren't actually doing too well with um, their, um, their funding departments right now. So uh, a lot of their patrols are cut in half, which um, you know, leaves leaves a lot of lack of uh, enforcement and authority on the water. So that's sort of where the guardian watchmen come in um, and sort of act as that authority and are using and inserting uh, our traditional uh, sovereignty and our laws with uh, the, the general public, with commercial fishermen, uh, etc. So this is a really important note to highlight. Um, but I will have to acknowledge that the, the, the government agency, the provincial government agency have been doing a lot better of having more of a presence here in our territory. I just wanted to sort of share a few photos of some of the wildlife that we see and some of the wildlife that we, um, we, um, we do work with and um, collect data on. So here you have an orca killer whale. Uh, I actually sn uh, snagged some of these photos off of the Spirit Bear Lodge website. And I just thought I'd be fun to share some of them with you. So here's a photo of a mother with the three grizzly cubs, a uh, humpback whale having putting on a bit of a show. And this is actually near where I work in Muscle. Here's a nice grizzly bear, or sorry, a black bear with fish in his mouth. And my favorite, a white bear with a cub, white, white cub. So here uh, I'll get into sort of my job uh, a bit more in depth um, aside from the, what I mentioned earlier about the, the data collection and the site specific viewing area that I monitor in Muscle. Here's a photo of our cabin. Um, you'll see in the photo my colleague there and uh, the cabin is equipped with a stove. So we have a wood stove. We also have a composting toilet as well as um, a uh, solar panel on the other side of the roof that uh, allows us to receive some uh, some battery power through the through the summer months um, but it fairly lasts us fairly well throughout the season which is uh, really helpful for us in the evening when it gets darker um, here's a photo of the inside of our cabin uh, you'll see our wood stove there as well as our uh, eating and hangout table and uh, some maps in the corner that uh, touch on some of our parks and conservancies so protected areas in our territory Here's another photo and it's more of an updated one. So you'll see that there's a flagpole that we added on. There's another um, roof uh, uh, for firewood that we um, shed as well as some more uh, firewood that we just put away. And you'll see in the photo, I have a photo of our dog that we had out there this summer. Uh, really nice spot. Um, and yeah, I was sort of hoping to talk, also talk about some of my job requirements. So I have this in notes here. So for my job that I do as a guardian, um, it's really important to have prior um, certification. So for this job, I need to have my boat operator's ticket. So um, you'll see in this photo, our boats are sort of in the background out there. Um, so that's called the small vessel operator uh, proficiency ticket. 
as well as your VHF or your radio operator's ticket. So sort of in the event of an emergency, how do you operate a radio? Uh, in the areas that we work in, it's uh, it'll take anywhere from two to four hours plus for any type of rescue to get to you. So it's really important to be able to operate the VHF and uh, contact Coast Guard in the event of an emergency. We also have to have your first aid, so level one, level two, as well as wilderness first aid. So again, being out in a place uh, where I work at Muscle, it's really important to be self-sufficient and to sort of have um, the prior training in, that you need in the event that something uh, goes wrong or goes sideways. Uh, another important one is basic bear safety training for bear country. So learning how to operate and when to operate a bear spray. Uh, knowing how to disengage a bear and how to pay attention for when the bear or wildlife is uh, feeling stressed. Um, moving forward on some of those notes, uh, those are some of the certifications and requirements that are necessary for uh, doing a lot of the work that you do in places remote in remote places like in our in our community. Uh, and sort of driving it home, my job is to educate the public, the boaters and visitors and commercial fishermen uh, on the work that we're doing as the, as the Coast the Guardian Watchmen and to also just let them know that we're here to answer any questions that they may have and we're able to even share some fun fishing spots if they're looking for anything, trying to catch a nice meal. Um, and we're also exercising our right to implement our indigenous law. And that's really a new, um, not a new term, but it's becoming more and more new in the world of politics and uh, in the world of indigenous peoples. Um, moving forward, Joe, I just have some links that I can share with the teachers. Maybe I can send them this in an email or send it with you. And these are some of the, yeah, these are some of the sort of different websites that I um, frequently frequent. Uh, so the Spearber Research Foundation, the Clemson Stewardship page, Emerging uh, Aboriginal Stewards, which has that video, uh, Coastal First Nations and Coastal Guardian Watchmen website, as well as the Spear Bear Lodge website, which is one of the lodges we have, or the only lodge we have in our community that you can come visit. Kayasaha, which in my language is thank you. And I leave you with a nice waterfall photo. All right, perfect. Perfect. Well, Chantal, I mean, the area that, it, that, you, that you work and you protect looks absolutely incredible. And uh, I can see why it is such an important area to protect with the wildlife and, and such. So thanks for the work that you're doing to, you know, kind of promote that awareness to people who do visit that area, that it is a special spot. It does need to be protected and it is very culturally significant. So thanks for all the work that you do as a guardian. All right. So if you don't mind hitting at the top of your screen should be a stop screen share. Let's get you back nice and front and center for some questions. Perfect. So I think I heard you mention you got a big rainstorm coming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's kind of funny. I wish I could share that, but it's a little bright. I don't know. It definitely looks a little bit uh, misty, a little rainy over there. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Well, let's meet some of our classroom, Chantel. So there are uh, a handful of classrooms who are tuning in via YouTube. So don't forget uh, to those classrooms. There's a chat sidebar on the right. Uh, let us know where you're watching from. Send in some questions. And we already have one class who did that. Uh, Madame Hennessy's grade seven, eight uh, in Brantford. So shout out to them. Don't forget to send us in some questions. But for now, let's start meeting some of our camera classrooms. So Chantal, we're going to start off with a classroom joining us uh, in British Columbia, Nelson, British Columbia. Uh, there looks like some grade seven students hanging out with Mrs. O.C. Lloyd. Let me get their microphone turned on. How are we doing, Nelson? Good, good. Hi. It's raining uh, here too. <laughs> but not as hard as California. Yeah. 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 Well, right, as my students remind me, at this moment, it is not raining. <laughs> uh, I see. Um, All right. Does someone have a question for Chantal? Can we ask a question? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I was just wondering, um, Chantal, in your community, do you have any classes that are interested in doing an exchange visit? Ooh, I, uh, well, you know, to answer that the best way I can, I, I obviously can't speak for the, the school necessarily, but I would say that I've been very keen to to sort of see any type of nation to nation or community to community 
our classroom to classroom connections, collaboration and meeting. I, I definitely would support that. And I can pass off some information and some uh, suggestions to the school uh, for you guys. What's the name of the school and the principal's name? Yeah, so the name of the school is the Kittisu Community School, ACS. Uh -huh. And the principal's name is Justin Magnuson. So I can share some of this information with Joe or with yourself, um, again, as well as with the link or the C's video uh, to put you in touch with uh, the principal there. Any other kids? Do you have any questions? No. Have you nice. seen well, we'll many come. spirit bears? No. Sorry? Have you seen many spirit bears? <laughs> Oh, I hate to even respond. Uh, people might get jealous, but yes, we actually seen one this last week and um, believe it or not, um, we actually had two in this system. I didn't see two of them, but I only seen the one and I'm very, very thankful that I got to see it because I haven't seen one in five years, mainly because I've been working in the fjord lands, which normally does not have spirit bears uh, passing through or trampling through feeding on fish there. But yes, there has been spirit bear activity here in the Great Bear Rainforest in Princess Royal Island. All right, very cool and very lucky to get to see uh, a spirit bear. Even if it is only one, it's still pretty awesome. More than most get to see, so that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And I will definitely make those connections. I'll connect you with Mrs. O.C. Lloyd uh, and you guys can see if, if you can get one of the, uh, a, a cross community meeting going, that'd be really cool. All Sounds right. Good. So let's see, let's visit Mrs. Padberg's grade sixes. I think she's got two grade six classes with her. Let me turn their microphone on. How, ah, there they are. How are we doing grade sixes? Hello. Hello. Oh yeah, tons of grade sixes. Awesome. Stretching all the way back to the back of the room. Uh, perfect. Who's got a question for Chantel? How long have you been doing your job? What my, my job as a guardian or guardian watch woman, I've been doing the job since 2015. So I start the, the, the job in August. Uh, that's when a lot of the, the, the boaters and operators will come around and want to view wildlife. So it'll, it'll definitely start in August and it'll go till October. So it's a short, short, short season, but yes, to answer it in full, it's been five years. And I actually am not going to be doing the guardian watchman role next year. I'm going to be moving on to other work that is important to me, but I have had a great time doing this job. All right. Um, besides cool. bears, what encounters ha with wildlife have you had? Ooh. Um, well, in Muscle itself, uh, I was very, very happy to see uh, um, a pod of killer whales come in. And it, you know, that photo I, I should have mentioned, it's not common. Um, for us to see those uh, animals or mammals around. So killer whales I'll run into. Um, uh, I will share that some, once in a while we'll have the local uh, random wolf pass through the, the community. So sort of the scavengers sort of just passing through. So we have had reports of uh, wolves around the community itself. Um, yeah, that's, that's sort of about it. I uh, shared a few of the photos with you guys. So humpback whales, black bears, grizzly bears. Um, birds. I love eagles. I, I, I don't know about you guys, but they're amazing animals, birds. Very cool. So the, um, the wolves that you mentioned, I know there's, there's uh, a type of wolf called coastal wolves that will come along and feed along the tide. Is it coastal wolves that, that, that you see, or is it, is it more like the, the forest dwelling ones? Yeah, it's a very good question, Joe. So very uh, important note, uh, coastal wolves are known to feed on um, very similar food like us. So if you can picture um, that fish earlier that you had seen with the black bear and the black bear had a fish in its mouth, the wolves won't actually feed on the whole fish. So the wolves tend to eat uh, only the brain or um, the, the eggs in the, in the fish. So the, the reason is very quickly is because uh, the wolves aren't able to digest uh, the parasite that may or may not be in the salmon itself. So it's known as a tapeworm. Um, so the wolves will tend to eat just the brain, which is the more really good nutrient spot uh, of the salmon. And um, again, the eggs, so the females. All right, very cool, smart wolves. 
Um, this is Hedekin's class. They are, let's see, there they are. They are joining us from Courtney, British Columbia. Let me turn their microphone on. How are we doing, boys and girls? All right, who's up with a question for Chantel? All right, so Chantel, uh, that was a little bit quiet, but I think I got it. They're wondering, after you finished high school, was there some other training or schooling you had to do to become a watchman? And is it possible to work all year round or is it just seasonal? Yeah, so to answer that the best way I can, um, the school goes up to grade 12 here. So I was able to graduate here at the school itself uh, with the certified provincial dogwood uh, exam. I really like school. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the the job itself is a coastal guardian, actually, I believe it or not, um, sort of living in the place that we live in on the coast. It's so remote, actually, I didn't mention, but the only place to get into my community is via a float plane or a BC ferry boat or a, a boat itself. Uh, so there's no roads in and out. So that being said, a lot of the training that happens for my job as a guardian will come into the community. So the instructors themselves will bring uh, their presentations, uh, handouts, et cetera, and teach us the different uh, skills we need. So uh, boating, uh, first aid, um, uh, general navigation of the VHF radios and all that sort of stuff it takes to be a guardian. All right, very cool. Uh, a couple questions have come in online, so I want to give a shout out to, <clears throat> excuse me, another classroom, a couple more classrooms. This is Duncan's class at Arendelle, and then Mrs. Kerwin's grade five sixes in Sarnia. And so let's uh, do a couple of their classrooms. So um, Mrs. Duncan's wondering if you have to be uh, in, uh, an Indigenous uh, person to take part in the SEAS program. And then Mrs. Kerwin's class is wondering, has your job taken you anywhere else in Canada? I'm just writing down that one. That's a really good one. Uh, sorry, the first one. Um, quick five seconds. I'm going to turn off my heat. <laughs> okay. Sorry. That's so okay. the, the uh, question regarding uh, if you need to just be an Indigenous person for the SEAS program, I will say in that video, uh, the SEAS program is designed for Indigenous communities. That being said, uh, if you were in one of our communities of the, of the three that do host the CZ program, or maybe develop your own, uh, they, ha they all have been uh, Indigenous uh, individuals, but that doesn't mean that, uh, just to give you an idea, uh, to sort of answer that the best way I can really quickly, the Guardian Watchman program in my, in my community here, we don't just acknowledge that we need to hire Indigenous peoples. I've had many counterparts and colleagues over the last five years who have been non-Indigenous. And it's partly because they're very, very animate and very engaged and wanna be proactive on the front lines and learn about the work that we do. And to be honest, being a guardian is a pretty sweet job. Um, going back to the SEAS program and sort of sort of where the stepping stone is, um, I actually will have to get back to you. I've never been asked that question and I really think it's a really good one. So thank you. Okay, and then the other one was, has your job taken you anywhere else in Canada? Have you been able to visit anywhere else with the job? Yeah, actually I have. Uh, I visited uh, London, Ontario. I visited Ottawa. I visited um, Prince Rupert and Haida Gwaii. Um, so, so not so much in the, uh, in the middle part of Canada, but I went to the Indigenous Guardians Gathering, uh, which was really cool to be a part of, uh, as well as London, Ontario. I was actually going to speak at a child health um, and wellness symposium. So how to get kids outside to play more. And that was really neat to be a part of with the Nature Conservancy, uh, now known as Nature United. Very cool. Um, another question from online before we check in with our classes again is from Madame Hennessy's grade seven and eights. And they're wondering um, what the fishing is like there. Is there good fishing in the areas you patrol? Hey, awesome question. Uh, answer, I can give you a for, for the state of uh, the waters right now. For some species, yes, it's great fishing. For others, it's not. So as some of us know or may, may not know, 
uh, the decline in salmon stocks all across BC and pretty much probably worldwide have dem decimated and have um, just gone down. Uh, and uh, so, so no for the sockeye this year. I will say we have monthly Coastal Guardian watchman calls and many, many, many communities, again, I'll echo, have not received much salmon this year. So none of us were actually able to harvest um, our jarred salmon that we do. That being said, we do have uh, crab um, down in the bottom parts of um, those systems. We also will have ground fish, so halibut and lingcod, all those types of good fish. Um, but yeah, so uh, us as a community and stewardship department, we do our best to acknowledge uh, the species that are on decline and we do our best to, and the elders say, you know, you're not going to go hunt a deer if it doesn't look like a good deer hunting season. You're going to leave those alone and let the, let the populations uh, regenerate themselves. So we pay attention to a lot of those uh, sort of factors uh, that are um, uh, around. So Joe is muted. There we go. That's better. So I was saying, Chantel, we're all, almost out of time, um, but we can probably squeeze another question or two. So uh, classrooms, if you want us to come back your way, give me a wave at the camera and I'll know uh, to visit your class one more. Oh, Mrs. Padber's class. That was quick. Do we have our Oh, you guys have to go? Okay, fair enough. Um, all right. Uh, Mrs. Head... Uh, Ken's class. Let me check in. Do you guys have another question? Yeah. Perfect. I missed the, the first part. I know it was about Guardian Watchmen, but what was the first part? Hey, what made you want to become a Guardian Watchman? Was that when? Or what made you? What made you? Yeah. Oh, I love this question. Well, uh, I don't want to make it too long. Uh, I, it's partly because I hadn't done the job before. So I didn't talk too much about my background and the roles that I do as a stewardship um, employee, but I have had two other hats that I've worn. And this was one of the hats that I thought, ooh, I want to try this. So um, clearly uh, the last uh, job I didn't try was the best because I stuck around for so long. Um, but really, I wish I could share a bit more about the work that I do, but I'm happy to do it in the future via email or whatever. Um, great question. Right. Well, Chantel, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Uh, it was great to have classrooms. We had a handful of classrooms in Ontario and then another handful of classrooms in British Columbia. So it's always great to bring a few groups together. But um, if you share that link with me, I'll share it with the classrooms so they can check out the C's video. Um, I'll connect you with Mrs. O.C. Lloyd's group so that we can see if we can get a uh, little community sharing going. But uh, it was great hanging out with you today. Thank you so much for the work you do and sharing it with us today. Awesome. Thanks for having me, guys. And I know maybe you guys have had lunch or you're about to have lunch. So I'll let you guys get on with your day. I'm going to actually head out to do some dis whale disentanglement training. So I'm busy wrapping up things. So everyone take care and um Enjoy your school season, work hard, study hard, have fun, take care. All right, I'm gonna turn the microphones on classrooms if you wanna say goodbye and thank you really quickly, then we'll sign off for today. <laughs> Thanks everyone for hanging out, lots of fun and we look forward to seeing you in some more Secret Path events this week. <laughs>